Postscript. More about Land of the Midnight Sun. This will be Project 7 from the Company Communicator Manual. Research your topic. The timing will be seven to nine minutes. Please help me welcome Kid Bueno. Thank you, Kay, for giving me my next speech topic. When, when I went to Long Urban, I went on a cruise ship. So as far as where I stayed there, I stayed in my cruise ship. I ate on my cruise ship. I, I just had to come out and see the, the town of Long Urban. <coughs> on that cruise, I actually went up the coast of Norway, which is one of the most beautiful places <coughs> in the world with the fjords and the mountains. And I heartily recommend to you to do this. And if you would like to see the other places that I went on that cruise, <coughs> they're in this Shutterfly book that I made. So if you'd like to see that after the meeting, I would be happy for you to do that. But as luck would have it, my nephew went to Long Yearbin in December. Can you believe that? You all have never heard of Long Yearbin. And my I have a nephew, <coughs> Scott Moore, who went with a friend, and it was totally independent of my going. He didn't know that I went. Our relatives told him that I had already been, and he went. But I was able to interview him and find out about what it would be like to go to Long Year and not on a cruise. It took me a week to get there because I was stopping at all these other ports on, the, on Norway, but he flew from Oslo, which is the capital of Norway, it costs $300 to fly from Oslo to Long Urban. And I found out on the internet that there are actually six hotels in Long Urban. Wow. But you remember, it has less than 3,000 population. But, but when I was, it is not like Miami Beach with all these gigantic hotels everywhere. I wasn't even aware there was a hotel there. And, and Scott told me that the hotels were very small. So they were, in fact, one of them was called Miner's Cabins because there was a, a coal mine there. So these hotels were of various types and probably some bed and breakfast. But Scott stayed in one called Small bar Hotel, which he was very pleased with. It cost $170 a night. He stayed three nights, and he had hoped to go dog sledding, to go in an ice cave under the glacier. Unfortunately, there was a huge storm while he was there. This is December of last year. If you go to the Arctic Circle in December, <coughs> what do you expect? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, he missed out on those things, but he was very enthusiastic about the trip. He really loved it, even though he didn't get to do everything he had hoped to. And he did see the Northern Lights. So. It was just so fortuitous for me to give this speech and have a, a personal experience that I could share with you about, about going to Long Yearman. There was one thing that I thought was really interesting that I did not get to put into my other speech that I want to tell you now. Long, Long Yearman, that whole island group, is sort of an international place like, like in Antarctica, you know, it's not any country. It's all the different countries have, have stations there. Well, anyone can move to Long Yearman. So, if you should ever commit some crime <laughs> and get exiled from the United States, you can move to Long Yearman. <laughs> However, there is one group of people who cannot live in Long Yearbin. And that is people over 65 years of age. Oh, really? 
If you are 65, if you have your birthday and you turn 65 when you live in Long Urban, on that day, you get a letter from the government saying that you must leave. <laughs> no. The reason for this is that corpses do not decompose in the permafrost. <laughs> So, so what's the problem? no one has been buried in Long Yearbin in 70 years. Wow. So this is just another interesting little fact. But until you're 65, you're, you're welcome to go. <laughs> <laughs> now, looking, looking to the future, on March 24th, of just coming up in two weeks, my husband and I are going on a trip to Fiji, Australia, Papua New Guinea, wow. the Solomon Islands, and Van Vanuatu. So, I have a, an email group called Travel Pals that has 57 people in it right now. And the only people in Dogwood that are in it are Kathy, Rachel, Tom, and Kermit. But if anyone would like to receive emails about my next trip, just tell me after the meeting and I'll add your email <coughs> to the list. So, with these emails, I do not send one every day. I just, if something interesting happens, like Long Urban, <laughs> then I send you an, an email for that day. So um, I just wanted to share that in case anyone would be interested. But I urge you, as I did in the last speech, to make your plans to visit Long, Long Yearbin. And Rachel has her finger on the button to turn on the green. Is that correct? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Rachel. <laughs>